And open the meeting Monday, March 18th, 4, 6.01 p.m. for Selectman Town of Oak Camp. Stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Don't fall oh, away. I got right back into you. I should have blocks on my lips. Okay. <laughs> First up. Warrant WR24 19. I move we accept the warrant WR24 19. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is approved minutes, and we don't have any for this meeting. Next one. Yep. yep. Next meeting. It's public session. Anybody here for public session? State your name. Lisa Taylor, East Hill Road. Um, I watched the budget meeting last week. Um, and at the conclusion of the treasurer collective session, she stated her salary account was going to run out of money. Um, the, is the chair stated that's because we paid the prior one vacation time when she left six days into the new fiscal year. That statement is not completely accurate because what is inaccurate? Well, if you took my pay, my three weeks vacation, which I earned, and which gets paid out, yeah. they agree. Don't make it sound like the budget came up short. Don't tell me what to make it sound like. Well, I think the fact that 4205 was paid out of that account for the interim treasurer collector. And $45 was paid out of that account for the current treasurer collector is why that account is short. Not because vacation time was paid out to me. Did you budget for your vacation time when you were leaving? It's part of the budget. I was salaried. I got the same amount every week, whether I was here 15 hours or 20 hours. So when I took a week off, I got a week's pay of what my weekly salary was. Okay. Well, it was an inaccurate statement and I just wanted that clear. And I also would like to address the comments that Peter and Diane made regarding the departure of the current assessor. They were in that meeting. They're not here tonight, though. And they need to be here for me to address their comments. What are you addressing? What, what they explained is going on. That seven employees have left employment in this town in a very short period of time. Yeah. And that's concerning. Well, it's concerning. As a taxpayer, I'm concerned. Oh, good, good. So am I. I'm very concerned about it. Well, I'm well I... aware of it, too. Yeah. Last meeting, you said you wanted. Excuse me, who are you? Good off the Red Nose Reindeer, Brad Taylor. East Thank you. Road. Thank you. At the last meeting, you said, I knew nothing of it. Of that what? can't be. Of, of all these people leaving or the clerk. No, 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 no. That's not. Or the assessor leaving. I knew nothing about the assessor leaving. That's what we were discussing. Don't expand it. I knew all the other people. I did not know the assessor was leaving. I don't think any of us knew the he assessor was know. leaving. I think it's because nobody paid attention. And I think that that gentleman, the newest uh, board member, was aware. Because he didn't say that he didn't know. <clears throat> I carefully watched the meeting. He was aware. So I was please. aware, but I have a personal relationship and the board of assessors does not report to the board of selectmen. It's not my obligation to report something that I find out from a friend 
um, to the Board of Selectmen in an official capacity. I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Correction on your pay. I'll agree with you. I would also like to mention that with no assessor in that office, when it's time for the bill file in two months to get loaded, if there's nobody here to do that bill file and the bills don't go out, by law, you can't collect that money till November 1st. Right. So it's concerning. I agree. Notice she's there tonight. Yes, her board is meeting. Thank you. Lucy DeLeo is online. Lucy DeLeo is online. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? Barbara Roshinsky, uh, North Field Road. Just to kind of update you that we would like to be able to use the voting of the room again for a Zumba because we will be homeless as of next Monday again. Um, we have another venue hopefully in the works, but we're not sure. So it would be this room for the month of April. We're kind of okay for May, I believe. I think as long as the chairs are taken away and put back how they were since the meeting, the selectman meetings are on Monday nights. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. It was their room to begin with. Right. Well, and it may not come to pass. We're trying to work out something. Else. And the exercise class will still be in New Braintree then. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't changed. They're still happy to have us down there. Any chance that we could send Zumba down there? They have, what happens when you go and you talk to different venues is that if they have something scheduled already, it would mean us changing the day, the time, all of that, and we'd lose members because all the members that are currently working out put that on their schedules as the time to go, and they may not have other options. So we'd like to keep it at the Monday okay. in order to do that. Thank you, Barbara. Next up, Fire Chief Tim Howe. Thanks, Hans. Well, I just wanted to kind of uh, Update the board on the doings of the fire department's goings on, um, some issues, things like that. Uh, a couple of things which I didn't even think of, but real quick, uh, I'm officially told you we did get uh, ten or eleven thousand dollars in grants for airbags, uh, so that's coming. We're going to be getting our six or seven thousand dollars for again the schools and the senior center doing those kind of events, the public events, the open house stuff like that. So grants are good. I did just apply for. Uh, FEMA AFG grant for Jaws of Life for 72500 We won't hear for that till October, November, sometime in that time frame. They'll hear about that. So we'll come to the grants. Uh, I wrote this uh, down. I'm going to read it just I didn't want to forget anything because there's kind of a lot going on. So I apologize. I normally don't read. I kind of really wing it, but I didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> so, a quick state of the department for March 18th, 2023. I wanted to come before the board tonight to give an update on the status of the OCAM Fire Department dispel some rumors that are running rampant around town due to misinformation. 2023 and 2024 have been a busy time for the department. Our recruiting efforts have paid off, and for the first time in years, the department is close to full strength. We sent three members to the Call Vol Academy last year. One member went on his own through college, and one member is currently enrolled now. OCAM and the surrounding towns are organizing a regional class, and OCAM has three to four more members interested in attending. Having this training allows us to provide a rapid attack to any fire incident in town while doing a properly, and most important, safely. As the board is aware, the town voted and appropriated funds to replace our 1987 tanker. As of late February, the last day the equipment was delivered, 
and the truck is now 100% complete. The project has come in under budget and earlier than was expected. The final numbers are as follows. Through the engine bond account, $832,644.39. The equipment money, $81,730.89, which brings us to a total of $914,375.28. That's $35,624.72 under budget. Unfortunately, what should be a joyous occasion for the department has been muddled with rumors and gossip. And I want to make sure, as always, OCAM Fire Department provides the facts. Rumor, rumor number one, the town was not aware we were keeping the old tankers. Made it clear, town meetings and informational sessions were not in the old tanker for several reasons. First, it did not meet any NFPA safety requirements that modern fire apparatus need. To me, there was no price that can be put on keeping the members of the OCAM Fire safe. Second, the failed inspection and pump testing every year was getting more challenging and costly to keep in service. Third, there was no room in the station. A truck containing water needs to be kept indoors. Without base space, it could not be kept inside. If it did not meet or pass safety and standard standards, why keep it? We don't need a big fleet, just a modern safe fleet. The truck did not carry any equipment as mentioned many times in numerous meetings. It was only seats for two members, no space for air packs, only a few lengths of hose, no ladders, no tools. The new truck can show up by itself and do everything needed to fight a fire. Rumor number two, the old tank was worth seventy to hundred thousand dollars We are bound by certain municipal rules when it comes to disposal of town equipment. We cannot just sell equipment. It must go through a sealed bid or approved bid process. The old Cam Fire Department uses municipal bid for surplus equipment. The old ambulance that everybody would thought would sell for ten to fifteen thousand dollars sold for thirty five hundred dollars. There's a limited market for old fire trucks. They cost a lot to modify or repair into another type of vehicle, such as a dump truck. By trading it, we were guaranteed a fair amount. Last week, I did some research to find out where the old truck ended up. The old tanker went to a small town in Pennsylvania for $24,000. The truck sold for $24,000 from a dealer after it had work done to get to pass inspection. It's being used solely as a tanker to provide backup to the primary tanker, uh, which by the way is the twin door in 1987. Uh, it is not an all purpose truck, but will be serving them by just shoveling water, a luxury we do not have. Trading the overall tanker lower with the total amount being financed. As chief, it made more sense to finance the 811-206, which was the base truck, other than the 824 by taking off that 15. I by no means am a financial expert, but the less interest we pay over the 10 years is better for the taxpayers. Rumor number three, I didn't get real costs before the vote. Rumors again of surface that I never got real costs before the town meeting, which is very true and for a good reason. Buying a fire truck is not like buying an item at the store. There is no base price. Everything from the number of letters in your town name to letter to the number of tools you must mount change the price. Hose types, size fittings, and valve preferences all change the price. Every day that passes, prices like engines, transmissions, and even tires fluctuate until you lock in a contract. The numbers we came up with were for a spec truck, it, the spec truck, if it was going to be available. If the truck had sold prior to our vote, which it almost did, we would have got a lot less truck and it would have cost us a lot more money. We obtained quotes from several vendors, which I've attached to the back of this, for base models that I used to obtain the number for town meeting. A good example of this is when a town builds a new building, they may borrow 8.5 million and only use 8.2, but they had the extra for unforeseen costs. At the end, we have a one-year bond here. Uh, when this is closed out, hopefully we can we can change that and finance that lower amount. All equipment was priced out when we presented to the FinCom and I was able to return money by being financially responsible. Room four, I have a slush fund with all the extra money. As mentioned above, there was money left over from the project. We saved them a few ways. I bought cheaper radios. I found some miscellaneous equipment from other trucks, and I spread it out under the current truck to allow to keep costs down. While we would all like to drive a Cadillac, we realized all we need is a Chevy. We tried to keep that in mind when this project came together. Not only do I have a life safety responsibility to taxpayers, I have just as important financial responsibility as well. All the money is still in the accounts, and I leave it up to the FinCom and the board to close it out the best way to meet the financial well-being of the team. Rumor number five. This one kind of blows my mind. I purchased car one uh, for $38,763.75. In March of 2024, rumors are flying around town. I did not get a good deal on the car. If that was a concern, that should have been said back to me in 2021. But instead, it's said behind my back over two and a half years later. If anyone can find a new Chevy Tahoe for cheaper than $38,000. I would be more than happy to bought it from that place if it was a vendor we could use. Rooms of Everyone knows this town hall is an old building where everybody can hear everything. 
The reason I bring this up is many people talk and they don't know who's in the other room working. When hearing the rumors and misinformation about the tanker, again, <clears throat> the new tanker again, the department in my name were mentioned things that made me leave town wondering why I am being chief. My primary concern is never wavered. First is the safety of each member of the OCAM fire department. I lose sleep when I'm trying to ensure all members are trained properly, have the training, the tools, and knowledge to go home safely at every response. That will never change. My second responsibility is to each resident of this town, both in time of emergencies as well as the fiscal responsibility to run the department in a way that is responsible and sticks to a reasonable budget. I will admit I've been soured by a small group who make continuous attacks on my character in the department. I am a firm believer that every person has a right to their opinions, and I respect them. I encourage any resident in this town to reach out to me for in-person discussions about decisions, rules, and procedures. I feel as chief, there is no way I can know everything, and I, always, and I don't always make the right decision. I look for criticism, new ideas, and better ways of doing things. I will respect people that disagree with me and always treat them with respect and never talk behind their backs or spread false information. The undeniable truth is no firefighter is ever too busy to be kind, respectful, or fit, and I live by that. While I can take criticism, I will not allow rumors to be said about dedicated members of this department, and that's why I'm here tonight to ensure these rumors are stopped. It is well known rumors do not have to be true to do harm, and I will not let that happen. As always, I will continue to give 100% to this town in my position. I work with the Board of Selectmen to ensure the needs of the town in a manner... I'm sorry, I will work with the Board of Selectmen to ensure the needs of this town are met in a manner that adheres to all rules and regulations. There'll be times when we disagree, but at the end of the day, having an open, clear relationship with the Board and the citizens will allow for good decisions to be made that will allow OCAM Fire to continue to grow and serve the town. Respectfully submitted, Thank you. Thank you. Apologize for being long winded. Thanks, Tim. The uh, I'm looking at the Tahoe. Yep. Here it says GPC Bayburn. That's the state bid, right? State bid. Yep. But any city town pays. We all pay the same. Same price. Yep. Currently, they're forty-two. And that was during COVID when you couldn't get a vehicle. <clears throat> Numbers. Well, yeah. I think it was very complete, very well presented, and I think it cleans up some misunderstandings that have been passing around town for a while. Thank you very much for your presentation. I appreciate it. Um, I have not had any concern um, about uh, the fire chief for his department. And um, I think uh, as the board responsible um, for um, supporting the fire chief, um, the fire chief should know that he has the full support of the board of selectmen and that um, any further rumors um, certainly are not coming from the board of selectmen and should be disregarded. I agree. You always have our full support. Doing a great job, Tim. There's not much more I can say. And I really appreciate you bringing the uh, truck in under what we uh, allocated to. And I do, like I said, it doesn't look, always happen. I look to the board for how well you work that out with the FinCom and the board for them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> If I may, uh, Paul Rochette from Gaffney Road. I'm not on the finance committee now, but all the time that I spent on the finance committee with Tim as chief, the communication between the finance committee and the fire department was always very open and it was very two-way and, and discussions brought up good points and, and negative points. 
and everybody everybody was well informed of, you know between the finance committee and the fire department's needs so uh i i give him a huge amount of credit for what he's done thanks paul Fire. No, I'm fine. So, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Police Chief Baring. I'd like to start off by saying uh, grants are in, and we're starting to receive uh, items from the grants. Uh, so far, we have the body worn cameras, and with uh, some difficulty, we're getting them rolled out. Hopefully, April first. That's our uh, projected date. We have all the software now. Policy is been cut. Um, I think we submitted the bills for those already for CM Geeks and the, and the, uh, the vendors. Yeah. Um, you should all have a copy of the policy if you want to just quickly read through it if you have any questions. It's a very thorough, it took uh, myself and another person about six months to draft this up back and forth with the attorneys. And very well thought out. And, and, uh, a lot of it's been proven with other departments as well. <laughs> That's what other towns use. Some of it is. Some of it was, uh, you know, suggestions from EOPS, suggestions from attorneys, stuff we came up on our own, thinking through the, the whole process as far as storage availability, who could see it, who can access it. Uh, Freedom of Information Act requests. That's that's all in there. We should look it over for next week and take a vote to accept it next week. Yeah. I put this on weeks and weeks. Okay. Time to read it and digest it. Perfect. <clears throat> also, uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I did get the radar sign that's set up. Um, I've been communicating a lot on uh, Facebook through our Facebook page with the police department and uh, unrestricted page. It's uh, interesting the comments you get. <laughs> People think that it's uh, a contest to see you can get the highest speed. However, that's not uh, in reality. <laughs> But the sign is out there right now. It's in the testing phase. We have to put that down on 148 for approximately three weeks. Upload the data to DOT. And we'll have to do that three, three or four separate times a year on the road of their choosing. And then it's ours to use wherever we want after that. So I'll be moving that around town. We'll schedule different areas. Um, if anybody hasn't seen the sign, you might want to take a ride by. It's, it's pretty nice. Uh, let's see, what else do we get? So we received the uh, Governor's Highway Safety Grant, and we also received the handheld radar unit for that as well. So they give you X amount of dollars for overtime to run officers for radar assignments, and they give you the equipment to do that. We just had our audit last week, first one we had in three years. All our records were perfect, and uh, the, the auditor didn't spend much time with us. She was in, checked out paperwork, thanked me, and, and left. So that's all in order. Thanks. Still waiting on the uh, Motorola radios. They're being manufactured. I asked what the holdup was for the grant. And I was told that uh, there's a high demand right now for radios because of the grants. And we would in line to get ours at an unforeseen future date. So I don't know if it's in the next month or two. I'm hoping anyway. Taser was the same. They, they're thinking that I'll get the tasers in the next four to six weeks. So when we do, we'll get the training completed for that and we'll deploy those as well. You already have tasers, so these are the replacement ones. Right. So what happened with the old tasers where the uh, contractor, Axon, no longer has a liability insurance to cover the old tasers. So they were coming to an end whether we wanted to or not. In other words, if we used them, we were on our own liability wise. If something went wrong with them, they were not going to back up their product at all because it's being phased out. 
So those are, for all intents and purposes, can be crushed. They're no longer going to be uh, used or utilized after we get the new tasers. And obviously, because there's no liability from the uh, manufacturer to cover it. So good thing the grain came in when it did. Everybody's going to be retrained. Yeah, it's a different style taser. It, you can deploy two uh, two different shots. So in one side, you can put like a 25-foot cord. and the other side, you can put a 12-foot cord. So if you're close, you can use the 12-foot cord or the 25-foot cord. Or if you don't hook up for NMI, which is the muscular uh, electrical shock, then uh, you can shoot them again with the uh, second cartridge. Hmm. It's not the highest technology that they offer, but right now it's the best. They have Taser 10s. We're getting Taser 7. Taser 10s are uh, not field proven yet. I guess they're still having some issues with them. But the 7s will be around for a long while. They're not going to phase those out anytime soon, so it's good to go with those. Okay. Kind of training goes with the body cameras. Uh, so, well, we're going to be doing some training tomorrow night, and it's going to be mostly policy and uh, use. So when the, the camera's on your body, how to use it, when to engage it, go over the entire policy. When you're done with your shift, how to download the information back onto the uh, hard drive. So we have a four terabyte tower that we're going to be storing all our own video footage for. And that way we have it. It's not in the cloud. We, we can... It's self-contained. That was part of the grant, too. They wouldn't allow us to have a cloud-based storage. I don't know why. There must be some security security or legal reason why, but for whatever reason, we had to have our own storage, so that was included in the grant. Matter of fact, that training is going to be happening tomorrow night. All the officers going to be there for the training, or are you doing it in sections? No, most of them will be there. I think if those who can't make it tomorrow night will get a training in on another day. A rollout will be April 1st, so if they don't get their training by April 1st, they're probably not going to be able to go on a patrol. So the two full-time officers are basically already trained. The part-timers are the ones that need to get in and get the training. Um. The uh, use of the cameras, it says all enforcement encounters where there's at least a reasonable suspicion the person has committed or is committing a criminal activity. That includes traffic stops. Yes. Also, anywhere uh, there is no expectation of privacy. So there doesn't really have to be a crime. If there's no expectation of privacy, anybody can record at that point. Okay. What um, uh, I, I would recommend that the community be informed of this new technology that's being used. Is there any plan to do any community education? Yeah, I thought I would, um, you know, advertise our product on our webpage and, uh, you know, educate people as to what it is, how it works, when we'll be utilizing it. So we're going to draft up a uh, an announcement to the public. Similar to what I did with the radar sign. <laughs> Maybe there'll be less uh, interesting. <laughs> less comments. comments. <laughs> Although probably not. Well, it's interesting, though. Is some departments are doing away with the uh, body cameras, and I don't understand it. Worcester was talking about doing away with the body cameras. But there's an outcry by the public for them not to wear them. So that's contrary to what it used to be. That's true. Just a stupid question. On a medical, do you have to be recording on a medical call? No, no, because uh, a couple of reasons. I mean, if it's something that may have been criminal and it's a medical, a criminal activity that resulted in a medical, I would say yes. But I would say no on, on normal medical because uh, it's in patient privacy and mm -hmm. could be a violation of HIPAA. Okay.
um, is there any process of auditing um, the, uh, it says when um, all attempts will be made to do this? Um, should, uh, is there gonna be any auditing to know when somebody isn't capable, isn't able to activate? Will you be looking at any logs to see, okay, this person did this many stops, but how come X number of them weren't utilizing the, um, the camera? Yes, there'll be uh, there'll be some auditing. Um, it'll be random, and it'll be so. I know there was a big discussion about that with the attorneys, and they said that if you're picking on one person, you really can't do that. So you have to randomly audit certain cameras, and you can also view them uh, as a supervisor. You can view them anytime you want. So if I think somebody you know was not turning on their camera, I could just come right out and ask them why not. Do an audit of their camera, see if they're actually following the policy. But that has to be done at random for, you know, unless there's question. Do we know if um, uh, community town councils have been involved in reviewing these? I only ask because it's really the, the town's liability. Um, and although I, I am sure between all of the resources that the chief has used, um, should the town council um, also have a chance to make sure that we're fully protected? Good. Certainly, if you want to pay for the attorney to go through it and take a look at it, I don't have any objection. However, you, you should know that EOPS, Executive Office of Public Safety, has approved this policy, and we wouldn't move forward without it. Don, I'm sure, is familiar with the process. The other thing, <clears throat> what you're saying is we should probably send this to Maya. Mm -hmm. Just have them give it a once over and make sure. Yeah, they would. I would agree with Don on that. That's you probably know, the better way. Because they're the ones insuring us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so if we had a, a complaint of discrimination, uh, Maya would be covering us for that? Out of our general liability insurance. <laughs> the only complaints, if any, which we don't really get those types of complaints, will go down as a result of the body of the uh, The amount of complaints and follow up that you get from the citizens after you've worn a camera tends to decline rapidly. Because it's recorded. Correct. Everything's recorded. They know that. They can't lie to you. They can't go back and say something else happened that didn't. And the other thing you have to warn the public of is uh, perception, because it's only one camera perception. And sometimes if you're involved in an incident and something happens and you are only seeing it from your point of view, even the camera only sees your point of view. If you have other cameras, there are times you can pick up other parts of the incident that weren't seen. So if an officer would have read a report and say this happened and it was in his peripheral view and it wasn't in the cameras, now you have an issue. And uh, that's all, that's all covered. So, but the camera itself usually satisfies <laughs> that and you don't have an issue with uh, citizens coming back on you because they're afraid of what's recorded. Hence why the departments are doing away with the cameras because there's an outcry of the citizens saying that they don't want them to have the cameras. Not that it has anything to do with here, but the university, Clark University, First thing that they did when we got the cameras was student bodies came out and said that they didn't want us to have them. They wanted to defund the project, remove that from the police, and take the money themselves. Down there was about one hundred twenty thousand for the for the camera program. They wanted it. We went and got it before we got to deploy it. They wanted to defund it and pull it away from us because I think they realized at that point it was against the narrative. Going forward, you get the grant to pay for storage equipment and all that. <clears throat> Going forward, is that something you need to add into the budget? It may be. I'm going to have to wait and see for the first year what it's actually going to cost us for the. So that we have four terabyte, and oh. according to the according to the policy, you know, we could have up to a year storage on certain things, maybe years of storage on cases. 
So I want to wait and see exactly how much of it we can store, how long it's going to take, and how much of the memory it eats up before we need to buy more. Budgetarily, that it, you're right, it may become a concern later on down the line. But that's good. We're going to have to wait and see, I guess. Um, does CM Geeks know about that? Yes. So we're contracted with CM Geeks for the four terabyte tower. They set it up. They helped us with the software. Download was rather difficult, so we had to involve them. It's never easy. And so setting up the uh, download and actually getting the uh, redaction software, it was supposed to come with the program. It didn't. We had, you know, half the program downloaded. It was a it was a mess. So we had to have them help, and we wound up calling and. I think Kevin's got seven or eight hours collectively on the phone with the vendor trying to straighten it out. And that, that gives you a better understanding of exactly what was going on and why it's taking longer than we anticipated. True. <clears throat> okay. What else? Uh, as far as calls go, uh, we've had one serious call recently with a young man with a firearm. Uh, he's currently still incarcerated. It was an incident up on Edson Road where uh, three individuals were intoxicated and they were harassing e each other. One person said, I'm going to bed. He went to bed. They shook his trailer and you got to laugh, but they threw a goat in on him. They opened the door and threw a goat inside the trailer. He didn't like that, so he came out shooting. Uh, the officers involved did an excellent job. I got caught. I, I arrived at the scene just as he was being taken into custody. And... Uh, you know, I really want to thank Rutland and Barry Police Departments as well as Officer Hare for doing an excellent job. Nobody got hurt, and uh, they did it by the numbers. Something to be proud of. Good. <clears throat> you had sent us an email about the drone. drone. Yeah, so... Uh, as I had stated earlier, we'd like to uh, use some ARPA money to hopefully buy a search and rescue drone uh, in which we've had several times we could utilize them. Um, obviously with the uh, Owen Vidaire case, our own drone would have sped up the process. And, you know, having a, a small autistic boy lost in the woods is, as everybody knows, very dangerous, especially near bodies of water. And, most recently, we've had incidents where, you know, I know they're animals, but people's pets have taken off on them. And we spent a lot of time trying to find dogs in the woods to reunite them with their owners. Thankfully, both uh, pets that ran off were found and still healthy and good condition, returned back to their owners. But one of them was out there for, what, three weeks? Uh, 32 days. 32 days. It's quite a while. <clears throat> that type of rapid response and deployment of a device that could help us secure somebody quickly is uh, worth its weight in gold. We do that at the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. opera, opera stuff, so. April 1st will be the time we're going to be doing it. That's our first Monday meeting. I called the vendor see if they had a uh, a promotional video so i'm working on getting a video hopefully we can get something to to show okay not a promise but i'm, I'm trying yeah i did some research on it i do i am a licensed drone operator and um uh it is a, a very good drone um and the technology i agree is uh something that would be very much um beneficial to a small rural community that has uh, lots of woods and um, has a potentially longer response time for state police to arrive and that might have that equipment. And um, with the ARPA funds that we have available, I think it's something that we should very much consider. I agree. I think it would be good. I'll take that up with the rest of the ARPA requests on uh, April 1st. Okay. April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah. You can come right on right after Cemetery Commission. 
Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> You'll be announcing the winners of the speed contest. I will. On April yeah. Fool's. With mail in citations. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need a uh, plate reader to hatch it all. Anything else, Brent? But I think that's it. I mean, it's uh, business as usual. Uh, we've had a few serious incidents, one I just covered, and uh, everything else has been, you know, pretty much routine. I hate to use that word because no call mm -hmm. is routine, but, um, you know, we've been keeping up with the calls and Kevin and I have been uh, out straight on certain days. It was one day I just went from call to call to call. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> Not a good day. Okay. Mostly medicals that day. Oh. But as a first responder, I respond to all of those. Unless it's, uh, you know, a cold or something like that. And any call outs after midnight? Yeah, I've had a few. Um, I had call out on my day off. I had to call out for the uh, young man up at the camper that was doing the shooting that wound up being on 3 a.m. Matter of fact, I think I called you for bail. <laughs> Bring it in. I think that was about, what, 2.30 in the morning? Yeah. I figured I'd be waking you up. I didn't realize you were already driving over to the city police barracks. No. Anybody else have any nope, I'm fine. questions? All set. All set. All right, target, Great, thanks. Next up, Kevin Courier. Give you some info up there on, on the <laughs> safety complex. We have no safe way to get out and change the light bulbs or the ceiling fans or anything, and this would work for both departments. And right now, the fire department has 14 sets of fluorescent bulbs that are out. They have no way to change them. Going on to something that Harper could look at, or you can get a good use of around, around $6,000. 6000 Six, yep. It can only be used like on pavement, concrete. Can't do the flagpole. <laughs> how, how You're tall, trying, aren't how you? How tall does it go? How high? 19 feet. I got to figure out how to. I'll use my drone to paint it. <laughs> Where would you get this? Where would you get one? Um, United Rental sells them. Mm -hmm. okay. Have anything on this? People first. I add this to the April 1st list. What else? That's it. That's it. How are you doing with the sand and salt? Right. As long as it no, as long as like nothing happens. Like it is, we'll probably... You haven't run out yet. So Plenty in the shed, and I still have some budget left. So, okay. All right. Next up, Department of Agricultural Resources, uh, now Inspector of Animals. Yep. Uh, the current inspectors are Tina Lindsay, who is also the Animal Control Officer, and Tracy Early. Uh, they've been the inspector. Of animals since I've been here. So it's to the board just to nominate them again when they would come in and sign and I would notarize their signatures. Send it over to them by April 30th or excuse me, April 1st 
and then they'll send them their certificates that it's good until April 30th of the following year. Motion to approve both Lindsay and Tracy Bearley. So moved. In favor? Aye. Aye. We don't have to sign anything, right? No. Uh, Aaron, municipal fiber grant. Um, so a few meetings ago, I had asked if we could um, get an estimate for running uh, fiber uh, between uh, the municipal buildings. Um, and as I mentioned at the last meeting, one of the vendors, um, Com Tract, um, said, "Well, why wouldn't you use the um, uh, municipal um, fiber grant, uh, which rewards up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year?" And OCAM would be prime uh, to receive this. Um, I did contact um, Comtract and Phoenix Communications, um, who does um, fiber installation. I'm meeting with uh, uh, Phoenix Communication tomorrow at um, 10 30 or 11, uh, sorry, 11 30, um, just so that they can see the buildings. Um, the distance between the buildings. Um, I heard from uh, Com Track today, who said that um, uh, to prepare the budgetary scope of work that you can utilize for a grant submittal, we do not need to do a field site survey or internal building pathways. Um, so there, I offered to meet with them as well, um, but um, uh, they're working on their um, grant proposal or their cost estimate. Um, and I did also reach out to the superintendent, um, because we do own another building in town. Um, and, um, they have their own internet drop, their own server, all of that. Um, but, uh, it was recommended that, um, if you're, if you're running a half a mile of fiber and you're passing one of your buildings, why not drop it at that municipal building? You have no idea what in the future, if we would want to have, let's say, cameras on our property um, to have that drop there. So um, the superintendent connected me with her director of IT and building um, maintenance, and they're both um, seemed to be on board and offered to uh, meet uh, if we had any further questions for them. Um, so I would imagine by the end of this week, uh, we will um, get uh, two um, cost estimates or proposals that I would propose that we send to um, our grant writer. I can um, help uh, continue to continue the write up that I've done, have them add anything that they think we should add, uh, and we can submit it before the um, the April deadline. So if we could put that on next week's agenda, just in case um, we get the proposals by then. Who are we using for a grant writer? Um, the one that we we currently use. Um, okay. Strategic? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Only because we've not really engaged um, CMRPC at this point. Um, and so. Okay. Are you going to use Blythe? I, I think that's, is, I only know of that one name. She's the one that's done a lot of the work for the police department. Yeah, I don't. Does that company have other people that they would they have other people with specialties and certain? Yeah, yeah. I think she's yeah. assigned to OCAM, isn't she? She's she has been assigned to yeah. OCAM. So hopefully they would say, "Oh, we've done this grant a million times," uh, and they would pick that <laughs> pick that person. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm again April, the first or second week of April is the deadline for the grant proposal. Um, so hopefully we'll get that back in time. Oh. <laughs> so, the twenty fifth will be our off meeting. The budget. Yes. Yeah. If we could put it on the budget meeting. So March twenty fifth. And I'll I'll push both of these companies to have their estimates in, so that we can then um, get it to um, the grant writer. Okay. Uh, it also covers um, infrastructure, software, everything related to this. Um, oh. uh, and I also checked with the library. Um, 
there was a question about whether or not their CW Mars um, interferes or it does not. They have another drop just for internet. So we have internet, 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 internet oh. um, in all these buildings that we'd be able to have one internet, maybe with even a higher bandwidth yeah. um, to connect all, all buildings. So we'd save money on that and on the... Um, uh, routers that go with all of them yeah. um, that we might be able to invest in um, wireless extenders because this room, the internet comes and goes. Um, and so um, with some of the cost savings, looking at some of the technology upgrades. That's fine. Next up is the library roof. We're not here for the library roof. No. I can tell you a lot about the library roof. <clears throat> I might have been the one that triggered this by saying, I mean, somebody needs to look at the library roof. Oh. But I, I can blame there, you. I have no. Uh, <laughs> Wait, skyline engineering looked at the roof overall in good condition needs about four thousand dollars in repairs for missing a compromised slate most expensive color cut and size of course nothing was spared we should just go with OKM Green. <laughs> oh, and they're going to clean it also. Library's building maintenance budget for this year is 4650 This is at least sixty five hundred, four thousand, and twenty five hundred. Yeah. So, I think with the prospect that this was going to be uh, uh, tens of thousands of dollars, um, and at least I was thinking that this was going to need to be an ARPA come April first. I think this would be an appropriate um, ARPA investment. Yeah, I would be comfortable taking that out of the yeah ARPA funds and get it done because there are. I believe there's issues um, with the window and maybe if they if there could be some use of the maintenance to address the window uh, water damage yeah. on that back wall. Yeah. I, I looked for that for about five years. It's coming in somewhere. It's coming in somewhere. <clears throat> So the, does this bid say that they're going to uh, purchase the uh, yeah. Susan Turnbull? You uh, you spoke to me. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Susan Turnbull, 1089 New Braintree Road, former library trustee. Does this um, say that they're going to purchase new slates or are they going to expand a valley to obtain existing slates or where are they getting their slates? Repairs for missing or compromised slate and some additional masonry work. Yeah, I guess. So, did that answer your question? <laughs> Fully. <laughs> I would say ARPA would be appropriate for this one. Then, Audrey, April 1st. April 1st. I was surprised it was coming in as low. Yeah, as it has come in, because I've heard, you know, people saying yeah, we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. It's so dangerous and it's going to fall apart and we're not going to be able to get the pieces. So I said, that's good. Good to have any. That wasn't me. Oh, okay. It wasn't you. No, I don't think so. The other thing go on the school budget right now. Oh, um, oh, I mean I oh, does it say quarter? No, it doesn't. No, just this it 2025 just says, budget yeah. update. 
I mean, it's probably worth saying that um, the overall, it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And we're only at the very preliminary phase. Um, and um, the um, challenges of retaining and recruiting on the, the um, salary structures that we've had uh, is only going to get harder and harder and harder. Um, and I think as long as we need to say that as many times as we can, because um, the budgets are going to get much, much harder. It's going to be very tight this year. And only going to get worse, I think, as future years come down. We've spoken with most of the departments in town. We just have a few left that we haven't spoken with. And they're scheduled for March 25th for Historical Council on Aging Board of Assessors in the Fiber Grant Program, which we're going to be discussing. And then we're definitely going to have to start looking at the money we have that's coming in to start planning what we're going to do about salaries. And I think it's also important. My understanding is that the wage study wasn't implemented or fully implemented um, from a few years ago that said, highlighted that we were below market. Um, and um, Which means that the prices have gone up. Yeah. If we were below then, we're seriously below again. Well, that doesn't mean we haven't tried to do anything. Yeah, right. Yeah. We tried to do a three year plan to get yeah. Yeah. everything moving ahead, but um, we've done the best we can with what we've got. I'm just questioning whether what we've got is enough. Uh, it may not be because no, we have so. no idea what the school is coming in at. So I, I did attend that uh, public hearing. Um, and so um, they did present. Um, what they they approved the budget on last Thursday. Okay. Um, we haven't have we received anything from Pathfinder. No, they just had their meeting on Wednesday. It was Wednesday, and they did um, actually. And Paul uh, came to the meeting. Paul attended. Well. Yep. Um, uh, I know New Braintree got theirs, and I believe it was a forty-four thousand dollar increase oh, um, from last. You year. gave me the for for New Braintree. For Pathfinder? Oh, Pathfinder was um, a $44,000 increase. I didn't bring my paperwork. Paul did give me. I was trying to remember what it was. I can go get it. Uh, where am I at? For New Braintree or for Pathfinder? Um, Pathfinder? Oh, I don't have that. I have that. But for OCAM from um, Quabbin, which the um, public hearing, um, first time I had ever attended, uh, Cheryl Duvall is fantastic at um, budget presentations. She knows her numbers. She sure does. And, and she's retiring this year. So Is she? Yeah, this is her oh, last yeah. year. Um, so I believe OCAM is looking at a 5.58% increase um, this year. I think it came out to like an increase of 144500 roughly. That's how much more we're going to be paying over over last year's on this proposal, mm -hmm. which will probably but this isn't the final. Right, it, it'll change at least two more times. And it depends on how the state budget goes through, you know. Right, and this is the third um, time that they've given a proposed number. It started at um, forty one million five hundred and twenty five thousand, and it went to forty million sixty one thousand. So they, this is their third pass at it. Um, so they definitely eliminated things um, from their first two. Yeah. I know our required well, local contribution has gone up quite a bit. His meeting actually. when he went attended Pathfinder. Thank you, Paul. I was just hoping we wouldn't have to use to free cash again to balance the budget, which is never a good thing. And we just might end up having to do it again this year. Pathfinder uh, for us is an increase of 25,321. Oh. Isn't bad. No. And we have, I mean, I, I think we have at least three or four kids that I know of that go to Pathfinder. Does it say what our number is? The uh, attendance for Pathfinder was uh, an increase of one student. 
And I think I think our increase dollar wise was like twenty two thousand seven hundred over last year. Okay. <clears throat> Yep, we had 13 13. going there, and now we got 14. Wow. So. Glad we have that option. We have no thing. Pathfinder kid who now teaches there. Next thing's actually correspondence, so I'm going to put that on the correspondence. The minutes correction request. Mm -hmm. okay. We go to admin assistant report on school budget discussion, <laughs> town administrators, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think last month I attended a dispatch meeting at Rutland Regional uh, with Hubbard, Stan, Barry, Rutland, where was invited. They did not attend. Uh, at the end of that meeting, Warren. Warren, excuse me, Warren, not where, Warren. At the end of the at the end of that meeting, the town administrator for Hubbardston uh, spoke with myself and the TA for Barry, asking, you know, if we wanted to get together or if he put something together, um, just to discuss school budget, um, which it did happen, and I sent the board an email. Last week when I attended the meeting, which was held in Barry, it was the town administrators of Hubbardston, Hardwick, Barry, held in Barry. The reason of the meeting was to discuss and understand the struggles each town may, may have with the proposed school budget. Hardwick and Hubbardston will be proposing a lower budget than what the school has asked for. At their town meeting, they stated that they have the support of their board of selectmen and FinCom. Barry's TA, although new in her position, said Barry would likely pass it, as they always do. I made it clear, although they all know by now, that I'm not the TA for OCAM, but that I was happy to attend the meeting to stay informed and bring back any information for the Board of Selectmen. The goals of these meetings is not to not support education, but to come together opposing the unrealistic budget proposed that none of our small towns can afford without dipping into free cash or making drastic cuts that will impact the services of our taxpayers. Ultimately, Hardwick and Hubbardston were really looking to do a united front of, you know, maybe we can all say no. Clearly, that is at the end of the day for each town to um, make the best decision. Again, I went there, gather information. I think it's important to stay connected and to stay um, informed with your neighboring towns, towns that you're in agreement with, as in dispatching or the school, but I bring back any information provided and give it to the board. After that um, email was received, I did send an email requesting that this be on the agenda uh, for this meeting. Um, the reason why I did that is um, the town of Oak Kim, uh, the select board uh, received um, an offer to attend uh, a meeting of with the uh, school department. Um, all um, boards attended, um, New Braintree, every one of their members attended. Um, I represented, I was there for Oak Kim, uh, as was the uh, administrative assistant. Um, New, uh, let's see, Hardwick, I believe their town administrator. Hubbardston, their town administrator, Barry, um, their um, at least one member, actually, I think two members of the select board were present. And I found um, the school board, the school department gave a very um, respectful uh, presentation. Uh, two towns in particular, Hubbardston and Hardwick, I personally found them to be disrespectful in creating hostility um and so it it was not surprising no. that the two towns who were suggesting having this impromptu meeting not a regularly scheduled regional meeting of towns um approached um the other towns um to get together 
Um, interestingly, none of them showed up at the public hearing the, the um, same day that this impromptu meeting was held. Um, and I have concern that, um, you know, these two towns are clearly trying to create an us and them mentality, which existed in OCAM several years ago. And I don't think it did anybody any good. Um, and New Braintree, by the way, their board of selectmen received this offer and in a, in a public meeting voted that they were not going to participate because of they felt as though there was a process to do this. Um, so um, uh, the chair uh, wrote me an email explaining that, um, uh, you know, this is not unusual, um, that uh, when there are requests that come in, uh, the task falls to the chairman, um, uh, that um, the chairman can certainly, who, uh, according to the job description, uh, reports to the administrative assistant reports to the chair um, and past administrative assistants have it have attended regional meetings. It's been the standard for years, although I, I will say that I have everything that's in the policy manual that's in a notebook in there. There is nothing that relates to this. Um, the chair absolutely has the responsibility to address um, routine matters. Uh, between meetings, we have been meeting every single week for I think three months. Um, in a specifically to this matter, um, I think it would have been um, appropriate to let members of the select board who are duly elected um, to know of this meeting and an offer to participate, like happened with the um, public hearing meeting with the select board. Um, and the um, uh, the previous meeting with the school department. Um, uh, and um, and the question is, do we want to be associated with this um, group who is intentionally stated that they are trying to corral all of the other towns to vote no? Um, I, I think that's taking a that's strategizing, um, which I feel as though any um, that's a that's a decision that the board should be making that we're going to participate in strategy to um, uh, subvert the the process that the school board clearly has open has been open with us. They they've um, asked us to work with them. Um, they've offered to attend meetings, um, and um, I just have concern that um, these two town administrators who spoke for 95% of the meeting with the school department um, are uh, not giving the school department a fair chance to make a case. Um, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're proud of the fact that they've got four of the five towns to get together. Um, just the mere attendance at that meeting, um, I think, um, makes a, uh, um, says that we're concerned about the, um, the, uh, approach that the school department is making. And I don't, the board has not said there's been not been any discussion at this board that we believe that they are, I forget what you put in your email, um, Oh, un, un, uh, like create. It was describing unreasonable, the unreasonable budgets of the school department. I think that's a, a characterization that we have not made. Um, and but I believe Hardwick and New Braintree believe that, or not New Braintree, Hardwick and Hubbardson probably believe that. But um, we haven't we haven't stated that and. Um, it's not our posi public position. And just to be clear that when I did attend, not once did I, you know, lead that to believe it was more listening, you know, I'll bring anything back to the board. Uh, the TA for Barry was on the same boat. I mean, Barry, you know, they're all aware of who sits on the on the board of selectmen and Barry. Um, so I for me, it was just more informational, bring it back to the board. If the board moving forward wouldn't like for 
me not to attend these by all means. It's, you know, your prerogative. We're talking about two different things. There's been a regional meeting. Yeah, that's separate. This that's is what a, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's what she attends and she's going to continue. But that was not a regional meeting. Did you know that when you went in there? I, I knew it was just a like a, a to get for, together. Yeah, to get for the budget, but I mean, it was just it was informational. Once the meeting started, there's a difference there. Well, I I believe the administrative assistant said that she was approached during the dispatch yeah. meeting to say that they wanted to get together about discuss the budget. The budget. Mm -hmm. right. There's a for there has been a forum for that. Boards of selectmen have been and we invited. did not participate last year in it, if you recall. In that particular meeting. So moving forward, school. only school budget meetings. So I, I don't know they, about they did this last year. Oh, where they, the school and board invited vote. all the towns. We took a vote and said we're not going to take part in that. It's ridiculous. In like that informal group of the towns or with the school department? No, no, with no, not with the school department. Okay. Always yeah. with the school department. Right. What you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's that's my only point is having participated in that meeting and where New Braintree and Oakham had to fight to say a word and then were cut off by these two town administrators, um, they have an agenda. And and I don't believe that that agenda represents what we have presented right. at this point. Right. Uh, so, but I, I do think in general, regional meetings that are about regional problems that we've talked about are very appropriate. But I do think, um, you know, much like the board was invited to attend that meeting of with the school department. Um, and I attended and, and the board of selectmen administrative assistant attended. I'm just curious, where's the dis where's the opportunity for the full board to hear about these meetings and then decide if we're invited to attend or if it's just going to be the administrative assistant it's going to be what it's always been no boards of selectmen have attended the regional meetings those are all the, the tas get together and they hash out different things go back to their boards and present and the boards vote how many of those uh, since i've been here i'm only aware of one which was the dispatch mm -hmm. meeting you probably since you've been here yeah. you're probably only one okay yeah, it's, it's this time of year time. that they finally yeah. get to do this. Ashley went to it a couple Carol of times. Poole went to them all so the time. It, would it be inappropriate for the Board of Selectmen Administrative Assistant to let the board know every two weeks, hey, there's this regional meeting coming up? That way, if we have questions that we'd like her to address yeah. during that meeting. Yeah. So I think some more transparency on these meetings. It, it came up on a Monday or something, whatever that. No, I meeting. did inform the board. It was initially for March 7th. It got pushed oh. back and then it was held the following week. So I did. I just I remember something. I about, did say I don't know if it was in a meeting with it was in a meeting or, you know, off of a meeting, but I did inform and then it had gotten pushed back right. and rescheduled to that. It, it was at the end of one of the meetings yeah. that you had set. So I, I, I did inform. So I just want to clear the transparency comment that I'm not not being transparent is a matter of board of selectmen administrative assistant reporting on these which i think are great that there's a a, a line item here but things like that things that you're participating in yeah. things that you're working on because there are many more important there are other important things that we're not getting done um like minutes we i don't think we've had any minutes approved in january no nope, none so when so if like you know i attended the school board public hearing meeting I attended as representative of the town. I don't know if you attended as representative of the town, but that would be, I think, a duplication. So if there's opportunities where a member can represent so that the administrative assistant can also work on other priorities that might be missed. Um, you know, I, I, we look at um, the open positions, um, which is later on in the agenda, but, um, you know, there's, I feel like um, the town uh, accountant has only been posted for three months out of the last 14 months. We're, we're not going to get anybody um, when it's not posted. Um, and so I don't know if if the board is doing a, a good enough job ensuring that we're on top of all of these things when we're spread, we're spread out so thin. We're spread too thin. Mm -hmm. So that's where we prioritize. It's every single one of us. Okay. 
Paul has a question. Oh, Paul. Uh, Paul Rochette again from Gaffney Road. This meeting regarding the school budget, okay, which initiated by Hubbardston, this is deja vu. The towns <laughs> have all been through this before. Okay, all the select boards, all the finance committee members have met in Hubbardston. Uh, it is a public meeting, so even though the administration from Corbin wasn't invited, they were there. It was like three hours of total waste, okay? And the school committee and, and the school administration of Corbin is very open, okay? I think, I think their communication's been very good. Everybody can understand what can't be afforded. Hubbardston has an increase of like over 30 students as of last October, okay? They, they're taking the biggest hit on, on their assessment. And of course they would love everybody just to, to, you know, line up and get behind us and tell us that the school committee is crazy, but it, it, it can't be, all right? The, the problem with the cost of education, again, deals with the state. It deals, deals with what you hit with, uh, you know, mandatory local contributions. Hubbardson doesn't understand any of that. I got into a big battle when I was on a finance committee with the town administrator, and I basically told him to grow up and just start planning on how he's going to pay for it because he's going to wind up paying for it, even if it gets diverted down the road. We've been through that. We've had like four town meetings one year, okay? Yep. Finally, in December, yep. the secretary of you know primary and Makes secondary sense. education just said, pay the bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the best thing that OCAM can do we know Hubbardson's going to refuse it. Probably Hardwick's going to refuse it. Okay, it'll go back to the school committee. Let them deal with it. You don't even have to be involved. You know, it's no sense in making bad feelings. Everybody understands where everybody is. So, again, as a resident, I would just say, let them fight it out. Stay on the side and just watch everything go. Sounds good. I think you I think you went to the meeting that night. We had all all the committees there in oh, Hubbardston. Yeah. I mean, it was awful. It was terrible. And and Hubbardston has never really done much for OCAM. Okay, they've asked for us. Oh, for that. they were worse and, than that. Just not the, having the few times that we've asked Hubbardston for help. No, we got nowhere with Hubbardston. We got a big no. No, we're we're fine. We're going to do it this mm -hmm. way, and we can't help you. Mm -hmm. So I know this is your first time around, but I'm just telling you, the town of Oakham has gone through this whole thing. It's deja vu. I've been here since 2005, and I'll tell you, I was unimpressed with the way that Oakham was represented as we fought the school department for all those years. And I felt like we've moved in the right direction. Uh, and, I, and I think this, the school department in the last two or three years um, has really... Um, been responsible and respectful of the process, understood um, our constraints. And, and I just think that that particular group, that what they're trying to do on this particular issue is not the not, not what we should be no. part of. No, no, I agree. I agree 100 percent. I, I do take exception, though, that you don't think we've been well represented during budgets time with the towns and like that, because Paul used to fight it every year. I don't know what you mean. When he was in finance committee. Oh, I, I didn't say we were not well represented. You said you were unimpressed with the way oh, OCAM meaning, presented itself. Meaning the way that OCAM vote no, vote no on the budget. And, and then there was this anti, the parent, they were people were upset that the parents were being brought into the meeting. There was an anti-school sentiment in, in the town meeting. It was the taxpayers versus the school. Um, and we've we've moved away from that. We we are now trying to work together, um, and um, I think it's the wrong direction to be corralling the troops to go in unified to say no. That's a strategy that they have that we haven't voted on. Our finance committee hasn't made that recommendation, nor has the board. No. But what's actually needed at this stage in budget really is is to have the accounting firm put together what the forecast of town revenue was. That's the picture of the puzzle right. that everybody's going to need that. Um, and that'll that'll help make a lot of decisions. Yeah. 
It will. It will. <clears throat> So we're not attending any future with I, that group. That okay. For the, yep. you know, I understand yeah. the other stuff. Yeah. Um, but that I was concerned about that. Maybe. Yeah, no, I yeah. does the board have any new business? Oh, if excuse me. Oh. If I may, still under that slot. Yep. I just want to uh inform the board that I have completed the second portion of the mass certified public purchasing um, official oh. as of yesterday. So um, completed uh, contract and overview and then design and construction. And I will be starting the last portion, which is supplies and services for the procurement process. There's that. Good. Somebody knows how to do it. <laughs> When's your next class? Um, it starts la, at the at the beginning of next month of April. Oh, April. Mm -hmm. okay. How many days? The, it's self paced for five weeks, which I do all on my own personal time, even though it's you know town um, or for work purposes. Um, so I do that on my own, and then there is just a. Oh, there is a one day webinar next Thursday from eight to four for the webinar portion of the class that I just completed that in order to be able to download the certificate for that portion, I do need to attend the one day webinar via Zoom. Did you uh, take the webinar two weeks ago on this? Oh, the procurement, yeah, but the, through MMA, but this is for I, through this. Um, she can have it. I didn't. I, yes. I do think though that it's a, a wage an hour issue it's work related it should be work paid i agree no, i was going to ask agree. that question yes 100 percent agree do nothing for nothing yep yep <clears throat> no, just it's something i mean okim needs a procurement officer and we need somebody who understands the ins and outs and um, so we don't get in trouble and we don't have people questioning um that exactly. it was done properly exactly because i've already asked her questions about procurement yep. And she's come up with the answers from taking yep. these classes. So it's well worth her time. For and again, this was uh, this was uh, capitalizing on the pilot program mm -hmm. for one free designee per mm -hmm. town. So these classes, each class is about, you know, anywhere from six to nine hundred dollars. And then the grand um, exam, which is more. So this was all free at no cost to the town. Which is nice, except it's using your time. And which eats into her time for other well, things. That's, that's what I said. We're spread, mm -hmm. spreading too thin. We're here. we're spread really very thin. <laughs> and and it's a good use of her time. For the procurement, absolutely. Yeah. Well, not only that, it's in her job description too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was in Ashley's job description. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been Carol's at one time too. Oh, yes. Anyway, got it. Mm -hmm. new, new business for the board. No. I don't have anything. I don't either. Okay, old business. <laughs> this is you. Um, I spoke with um, Austin. Yes. The Ganaway. Town of Rutland. Yep. Um, town of Rutland uh, this afternoon, um, and um, I have some notes somewhere. Um, but uh, he, uh, interestingly, town of Oak Ham, uh, this might surprise people, is in the same exact boat as um, Rutland is. They actually don't have a um, personnel manual. They're not on time and attendance with harbors. They're in the process of becoming on time and attendance. Um, they don't have uh, processes. Apparently, according to Austin, when positions um, go up, they don't have processes for um, uh, his involvement uh, in approval. Um, and uh, their HR professional is 32 hours. Um, 
the board asked me or authorized me to talk with him about their potential interest in doing an IMA uh, with OCAM uh, to share um, HR support. I said between zero and five hours, five hours at the most, maybe ramping up. Um, and um, he said, honestly, uh, he talked to his person. She's very much on board with it. Oh. Um, he is going to put something in writing um, to send to us. He has not uh, formally spoken with their board, uh, which he will do. Um, but um, he was thinking like two, maybe two hours a week um, that they would either build that into her current hours or add that to her current hours. But she's working on what we're working on. Um, and so like when you're dealing with Harper's and you're having to do all these meetings, if she were doing the meetings representing both towns, it kills two birds with one stone. And they're working on how they allocate um, time off and, and all of that. Um, so, and I think with the potential bylaw changes that might be discussed in the future, um, having an expert like that to help us um, would be a benefit. Yeah. So he's going to write something up yep. and give it to us. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't see any issue with their board. Okay. okay. I mean, it's not like it's overtime. No. Um, no. So. And with all the changes in, you know, wage and hour and HR policies and recruitment challenges and retention challenges, this is a position that every town who operates needs to have somebody, you know, educated uh, in this area. Otherwise, you pay a bigger price. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next. By law review. So um, we uh, solicited um, uh, resident um, participation in a non um, zoning bylaw uh, review. Um, and we received one um, submission during the time frame that we had opened, which I think was at least a month. And I believe we've received a second one since then, but two people does not make a committee. Um, and so we as a board agree that um, we would become the committee um, and certainly welcome the public um, to participate. But with the town meeting in June, um, I think we need to start that process or, you know, think about scheduling that process. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I know we're going to be stopping the um, uh, budget meetings, um, but uh, like to talk about um, kind of a process for that review. I've already taken a look and made recommendations. Um, I think if every board member takes a look at our current bylaws, makes recommendations, it probably wouldn't take more than a couple meetings um, to make recommendations right. for possible changes. I went through it, looked at yours, yeah. what you had recommended. Yeah. I added a few of my own ideas to it. So when we all get together, that would work out fine, I would think. I'd and then send it to town council to so make sure it is worded properly. I think we're ready to. So if we could yeah. schedule that meeting, um, because then there becomes the public education portion, because what are you doing? You're changing the bylaws. Um, what we're, I think we're all trying to do is make the bylaws relevant um, and um, uh, enforce the ones that we're enforcing, um, potentially eliminate those that the town of Oakham no longer believes in. Um, we just need to make that, them very clear. needs, absolutely. I think there are, there are very outdated bylaws in there. There are things that were created in the 60s that the legislature since then has created a lot more laws right. um, that supersede our bylaws. Right. Um, so it's time for a, a cleanup. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So when would we... Um, Probably needs to be a meeting uh, after the next um, regularly scheduled board of after April first. It's yeah. got to be after April first. 
we still need a special night like you know every yeah. other that we do for budget and like that is to work on the salaries yeah that actually to me comes before doing the bylaws we our people need to know what they're going to be doing next year and making and that may not take just one night it may take a couple of nights to go through each and every employee that we have so right now april 1st is a regularly scheduled april 8th yeah. is no longer we're not on the every week schedule anymore because we're not meeting with boards or departments no but we, but we still we probably we need, still to may need it we still might need i would yeah. plan that for yeah, the eighth. there's so many other things still to do we've got to open up the warrant We've got to take in all the articles that people want to have put on for the annual town meeting. I, there's still a lot of creating writing and then send it to yeah, town that, council. That's why I was thinking we were too late and we're getting really late in the game. We're getting really tight for time. So we're meeting the 25th anyway. We can open them. Warrant. I would suggest that. Get it open. Right. That way we're not having to wait for a meeting to open the warrant. Right. Right. Because we, you know, we've really got to have to get it to town council before, like yeah. we did last year so was a little too late the on the, on the 20th. for them to get to it in time to hold our meeting. Yeah. This would ease up their time and ours. Yeah. If you want to pick a date for the annual town meeting, we could. Well, I, I do think that that's important too, because then you backdate mm -hmm. all the other timelines that have to be met. You do, because so then you have to figure that, out your two week notification, posting of the warrant a week ahead of time. So that night we can actually open the warrant, set the mm -hmm. meeting date, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we got six weeks to do it yeah yeah jam it all in yeah you know. exactly it, yeah when did you want to open the warrant 25th of april well, vote that day no, march. march that's the night we do the last of our boards yeah okay how many weeks do you want to give the warrant to be open probably longer because we were having to add things. I think we didn't we reopen the warrant or something. Yeah, I think we had That's to because it got pushed back. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. I mean, again, it goes I to mean, how many weeks backwards did you have to go before the warrant is closed? We really would like to get everything into the town council before the middle of May. If we usually run as we usually do in June, we usually hold the meeting. I have a question mark here for June 10th. If you think we can get done before then and you want to have it near the end of May, other than running into Memorial Day, that would not be a problem. But again, we still have to get it through town council and that is not the fastest program we've ever seen. I'm still looking at our normal date, June 10th, 11th, 12th. I really hate to see it get any lower than that. The year that we had it around June 30th was just too far. not a good thing at all. But if we aim for the middle, it would be fine. Again, I remind the board that I am gone from the 19th to the 24th. I know I will not be back on time if there's a meeting on the 24th. Okay. Yeah, because last year was on the 12th, so I think you had said this year. We had it on the 12th for the, for the annual the town meeting, which worked out well. So that would be the 10th this year. So we opened the warrant for four weeks. That puts it to the end of April. Mm -hmm. That'll give us... Yeah, we couldn't put it council. much... We couldn't put it longer than that. Because then we're going to eat into time with KP. Right. But I think that would be a good time frame to do things in. And deal with ARPA at the same time, finish up with budgets, all the last minute budgets and salaries that we have to do, work with FinCom at, to 
smooth everything out that we want to present and get our articles written. And the school department has um, asked for dates for um, them to come meet with FinCom and the board. Yes, of Selectmen. I saw that. <clears throat> they want to meet on Wednesday, so don't they? Yeah. Okay. So we, we'll have to start scheduling that in too for them. One of the FinCom members can't meet on Monday, so yeah. they meet on I thought Wednesdays. I saw that somewhere, yeah. yes. Which is fine with me, I don't. Doesn't matter to me. So we may have to meet a couple of Wednesdays in a row just to yeah. iron out any of the little snags yeah. we might run into. So far, so far, so good. But if income decides that things aren't working out too well and have to start cutting, mm -hmm. we've got to know that early. Nobody will be happy with that. So we'll decide that on the 25th. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, early voting days, mail-in voting option. So yep. has there been any, like, where are we at with that? We kind of agreed to do it, but we didn't vote to do it. Okay. So yeah. she needs a vote to do it. So. And, and I guess my question is, is there an option to only do an early voting day, like on a Saturday, versus doing, do you have to do all or none? Do we know? That's a good question for her. So her. I did email somebody like on the 28th of February, and apparently I didn't put the dot US at the end of oh. it. <laughs> um, so I emailed them again today, um, who is a lawyer, I guess, at the Secretary of State's office, asking for what are the requirements. Um, so I have not heard back. Oh, all right. Okay. But I, I mean, I, I do think that with the, 200 requests and I think 170 returned um, and uh, I think about 30 early voting, at least offering the early voting um, as an option. Well, we did figure out we have the money for the- Yeah, we have we have the money yeah. for the whole thing. We do. But we don't we have do. the, the people power necessarily to mail out these requests to every resident wait for the responses to come back and then mail out the ballots to everybody. That's my concern is there may not be a practical, unless we get help um, for the clerk um, to do all of that. And so if we met in the middle and at least offered an early voting day, if that's allowed. Um, yeah, we figure that out first. So I, I'm hoping um, before the, on our next meeting, um, we put that down on the budget meeting. On the budget, um, <laughs> three twenty-five, uh, and then hopefully I'll get the response. Share that with the clerk, <laughs> and then maybe the clerk can be part of that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Next, you got a schedule of annual town meeting. Yeah. So we we I think had talked about, or, or at least it was in my head, um, that we were going to try to do some education with the public about um, the budget before the town meeting about the town hall options. Um, I heard uh, informally on Saturday that that committee was meeting um, in the next couple of weeks, the town hall study committee. Um, uh, but um, my hope is that they're on board with making a presentation of more than one option. Um, but again, that time is just getting shorter and shorter. And then, um, you know, there's, I'm sure, strong opinions on um, all sides regarding the town election for town clerk versus an appointed position. Um, and then what I also don't have on here is the bylaws doing education on the bot potential bylaw changes. So um, kind of fitting that into that June 10th and then backing mm -hmm. it up. Um, we don't have too much time left. So now is the time we really need to be thinking about how we're going to get all that done. Yeah. So maybe on the 25th. <laughs> yeah. Why not? What are we adding now? <laughs> I'm sorry. The whole section. <laughs> yeah. but, Tom, is your committee going to be meeting sometime? We have plenty of board meeting tomorrow. Phil and I are going to talk about it. He's working on one more section of it. Okay, plans on next two weeks to have a meeting. Oh, okay. Okay, and then you're open to having 
public discussion of yeah. possible choices? There's one additional thing we're looking into it would be the school that came up in conversation a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I want to see if that's a viable option. And if that is, that would have to be part of our considerations. Right. I Wasn't it mentioned in your annual town report at the annual town meeting? Uh, the school? Yeah. I think it generally did, but we had heard from a third party that they really absurdly saying that they may not need our school. So if that's the case, and if, if growth's going to be non-existent or flat for the next several years, I guess maybe you would consider doing something like that. Okay. But then it would be a... Because I thought you said... We, just to do that. It yeah. Big... At your report last June, I, I think you said there were like three options when he gave his report right. to the town at that time. And I thought we were kind of sticking with those same three options it is. We, as we go we forward. Information on the, the, the center school part of it. We have some rough numbers on the new versus rehabbing this. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, we can put it together pretty quickly. Good. Just the other, the third option would be you have to see if that's going to be a viable thing or whether it's really going to happen or not. Yeah. Okay. When that town hall study cr committee was created, was that an advisory committee to the board of selectmen? Correct. It it was a board to come up with ideas of pos you know the possibilities and to present it their possibilities and their final discussions to the annual town meeting, which they have done for two years in a row now. When they're done, well, what they have to do, we have to have a needs assessment done. Yeah. Because all of their information is going to go into that needs assessment, which means we got to hire the firm to do that. Mm -hmm. And then all the procurement stuff that she just went through. Yeah. That's when this kicks in. And then we're hoping to get a non binding sense of the town at the town meeting as to the top pick yeah. um, of the three options. Yeah. And I don't know if we can do it by vo voice. You know, that all comes down or in reality paper. to what's it going to cost. Right. That, that's the whole thing. And, and yeah, that's, I don't think anybody can make a decision until I know what the numbers are. Then can we as a town even afford that? We don't know exactly what what's available for, for granting. Uh, there's quite a bit of money out there, but it's still going to be a very expensive thing for our town. It is. And, and our tax rate. School budgets. And if we threw in another seven or eight million dollars to worry about, it would be not that you can put your head in the sand and not think about it. You do have to address it. Right. I guess we'll have to present it and then people will have to make a decision what they want to do. Yeah. One thing is this building can't remain the way it is. No, it's... So not, we got to do something one way or another. Right. It sounds like rehab of this might be the possibly cheaper option. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll have to see. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Vacancies. Anyway, Superintendent. I believe that about a month ago we received an application um, mm -hmm. for someone, and I'm just curious where we stand on that application. So I did. That was the individual that was from New Hampshire. I did New Hampshire. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have it up here. I was a jury there. Uh, Bennington, New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Uh, I did reach out via email. They are moving locally. But since then, today, I received a second applicant. Okay. So two. So we have two so far. It, and it, it was, as far as I can tell, it's only been posted for one month on MMA. So, uh, and that ended on March 9th. Yep. So, I, I mean, a, a month in, in this climate is, is not enough. Like, unfortunately, MMA is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, are we, this is where an HR person, I mean, I do this for a living, uh, but 
this is where an HR person for OCHEM really needs to be helping to make sure we're doing what we need to do um, to be able to recruit talent. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I I'm concerned that with only two applicants, uh, and, and I was kind of, I assumed that that one applicant wouldn't have applied for a position in OCHEM if they lived in New Hampshire. Right. We were hoping he'd think about moving down. So, um, and you know, it's, they, a, it's a good thing we didn't lose, you know, the candidate's still interested. They said so 10 minutes away. Wow. Um, and then we have one local. So, um, again, with July 3rd or 4th coming up quickly, um, I, I just wonder if we should be posting that again. Um, since uh, it has been basically that one posting received the one applicant. The second posting is, I think, probably word of mouth um, locally. Um, so where do you want to advertise it? Well, we don't use Indeed. No. Everybody uses Indeed. We don't. <laughs> uh, and I, I guess my question is, with all these openings, why aren't we using Indeed? I mean, I set the Abbey up on Indeed a year and a half ago, and they end up hiring like 15 people. Hmm. Um, they also put a sign up on Route 31 and got people. Um, but um, between Indeed and I think we we need to be pushing it on social media, using our, our Facebook page to remind people um, that these are the opening open positions that we have. Because we have a town accountant um, and we have the um, interim town clerk, the highway superintendent, potentially an assistant town clerk. Um, positions that are open and um, unfortunately MMA is only 30 days and you're done um, mm -hmm. and, and that's just not not enough um, so I really think we should be going with Indeed it's not difficult to set up no we had we had done it on oh, Indeed mm -hmm. so then we must have an account we still have it I've never used Indeed here I think <laughs> Ashley I think we did it with Ashley a couple of times so we might need to start yeah. over yeah we yeah. Didn't get any applicants that we accepted, though, from Indeed. That was the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a, you know, the, their pricing structure, they go out and source candidates, or you do a passive um, where you wait for people to apply. Um, and you only pay for those you contact if you do the passive approach. Mm -hmm. um, but um, with, with time coming quickly um i don't know i mean fortunately we now have a second applicant but i'm still not sure that two is sufficient all i can say is if you want more att attention to it you're going to have to increase the pay i i i think this is the the bigger issue it is it is going to be the bigger issue i think we were lucky we got two point mm -hmm. <laughs> two applicants for what we're putting in the paper to hire. And I think like for the interim town clerk or even the town clerk, you know, the Barry Gazette um, might be an option. Um, yeah, I, th I can see that, that it would be. I mean, even, you know, Ellie in her, you know, page two is most often the only place that OCAM is mentioned, but maybe in that one section um, they could put FYI, OCAM has, has openings. Um, I think it was in this week's. Was it? I don't know if we have openings, but she has the list of openings for the election ballot. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. That was in this yeah. week. But she, I'm sure she'd be willing to put in a, something else. Mm -hmm. She's always looking for something. Yeah. <clears throat> she had clerk. Yeah. What's your idea? I think we need one, but we, well, we need one. But... Um, but we, I think we need to. I think that would be a better one to advertise locally. I don't think we need to go on MMA for that. I um, agree. So, but I think the Barry Gazette and then using Facebook social media to share that that position is available. Okay. First of all, I'd like to see a vote that we need one. Yep. Number one. Number two. Where are we financing this from? Mm -hmm. We're already. Removing the admin to the PD. That's eighty one hundred dollars. 
we um, got five thousand. Yeah, budgeted. Budgeted. We didn't take a vote yet on the admin from the PD. We did last June. That was a suggestion that we would talk about it this year, but we never. Oh no, we we voted. I read the minutes. We voted it. I don't remember that we voted it for this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could always put I, it on the agenda. I, I know I didn't vote revoke. for it. Mm -mm, I didn't. That's true. Shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's in the minutes. I'm not listed in there voting for anything. Not, well, not, we can for, do it not again. for this year. We can do it I again. gave my opinions last year and what I thought. Then we said last year that we would take it under consideration this year. We said we would extend it one year and that would be it. And then we would think about it this year and discuss it this year. Oh, we can do that too. No matter what. If we pull her position out of there, mm -hmm. she's still going to have to do the details, mm -hmm. whoever that person is, because that's Fred's biggest. Oh, I agree. His I know. biggest thing is those details. I know. And on the opposite side of that is that brings us in 14 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, we want to keep ahead of this stuff. But like I said, with just those two positions alone is 13 grand. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. And we, um, we have to have all of our ARPA funds designated by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I did hear from Rutland that they have about six to 700,000 left. Yeah. And they're not sure that they're going to use it all. Do they, Can they loan us some? I was going to say, do they would, would they um, like to share with us? But this? actually, I guess their thought is potentially using it for their school assessments. Yes. Which frees up 700,000. Cash, free cash. cash. Yep. yep. So we shouldn't leave any money on the table. But There'll be no money on yeah. the table. But this shared service, shared clerk, even at a minimum, it could be a, a trial, but potentially it could be if there's money left over after we look at the next ARPA funding mm -hmm. um, that we may decide that it's funded for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. So. Nonetheless, we need to agree yep. that we're going to do it. Yep. We've been talking about doing a shared I know, clerk for three at years. least three years because yeah. we would see how much work that all of them had to do. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't that's nothing new. It's just how you want to go about doing it or how we decide to go about doing it. My concern is what kind of a background would they have to have because they'd be doing three or four different. Yeah, they would. Subjects. I mean, you know, the, the Board of Health's first clerk. We identified areas for better orientation. We created a, 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 um, a competency checklist. Um, and so if you train people, they can do the job. So let's provide the training, understand the needs. And uh, I'm confident that we can hire somebody appropriately and give them the training that they need to do the job. Because then they would move from Board of Health to town clerk which is a completely different set of but, problems. Uh, but what the town clerk's biggest, from my understanding, um, is managing dog licenses, which is a task. It's, I have a check, I have an application. Oh, they didn't send their um, rabies vaccine. They, for the town clerk to be calling people, chasing down rabies vaccines, is not something we should and be. census reports. So, I mean, there's definitely tasks that are not um, town clerk um, responsibilities. The town clerk needs to focus on voting, um, and um, as those rules get harder right. and harder. Yeah, yeah they um, are. Doing... So, and then they would have to move from that's two clerks. How many clerks are you? Assessor. Like? Assessors. Assessor. Now that one would be much more difficult my understanding with that is it's also um data entry mm -hmm. it's as the building inspector has um estimates on the cost of um, improvements it's entering those growth numbers 
into a report. And then you want one to do police details? Mm -hmm. Which is another thing that's not very easy to do. So you're looking for one person that has all these skills. It's just as hard to find one person for three to five hours a week. And oh, we, I agree. And, and so that's where, you know, in my experience, you have to either look at the pay or the job that you're trying to recruit for. And if you're having a problem recruiting, it's probably the job or, or the amount job. of pay. Yep. So um, we, we keep, you know, this is the third Board of Health clerk that we've had, but it was for two to three hours. Um, and um, you're not going to find anybody who's mm. interested in doing that. But you're looking for somebody to do four, five places? So those are just data entry. Mm -hmm. So you can enter data, you can do all of those jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And while they're doing that, they can watch our video and do our minutes. And that was the next one I was going to come to. I know you like doing them, but. No, I was actually just going to ask on the board, like Board of Health, Board of Assessors, would that involve the board to be okay as their independent boards? You know, they're elected oh, yeah. boards, so they would, you know, Board of Selectmen can't say, here, this is your person. They have to have an input. Yeah. You would have, you would have to ask the head person on each of these places if the person that we choose is capable, would be able to handle all these different tasks that would be put before them. I don't want, you know, minutes, okay. They don't even have to come. That's right. They could yeah. watch it. Yeah. Details and assessors would be my biggest problems. Oh, I don't even treasurer deciding what the treasurer wants to have done. I mean, honestly, that, that's another area that we haven't talked about, but even the treasurer is inundated and yes. overwhelmed oh, and doesn't have any extra support. And, and we need somebody to be able to support these other people if openings happen. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's no question that um, on 30 hours a week of administrative support is not enough to manage a town. Um, so... Definitely a shared clerk, I think, is, is needed. Um, more hours are needed. <clears throat> and you're saying use Opera to kick it off. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, as we, I mean, how much more infrastructure related is the basic function of a town that we're struggling to do right now mm -hmm. and that's what ARPA was for infrastructure yeah. um so uh, we we have to have it um earmarked by December 31st so we come up with that budget number and we fund it for you know a fiscal year plus whatever we happen to, if we could get it started before the end of this fiscal year um because just the preliminary conversations we've had about the budget, there isn't, I mean, we've returned free cash of almost a half a million dollars for the last three or four years. Um, but, um, so I'm not gonna say there's not money available, um, but um, the money is getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the money's getting smaller, but the jobs are getting bigger. That's right. And it's not OCAM's creating more work. I think some of this work has already been there, mm -hmm. um, but we did have people in a salaried position who had been doing it for 20 plus years. Yep, mm -hmm. um, exactly. And across the state, those people are leaving those jobs. Mm -hmm. And across the state, boards of selectmen and finance committees are getting requests to increase pay and hours from 30 hours to 35 hours to 40 yep. hours and to add clerks. Mm -hmm. So we're just um, a few decades behind in getting on board with what we had to. Yep. Okay. 
And do we have any update on the Board of Assessors? I think we got one email last week. That was it. No update. No, I have no update. An email mm -hmm. with said possible prospects. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's still here. Probably. But, I mean, to Ms. Taylor's point, that is obviously a vital position. It, the taxes going oh, out and oh, even yeah. even the budget being approved. Um, yeah. So I, I just hope that the Board of Assessors will work with us to let us know what we can do to help um, so that there's no... Uh, I'm sure they must have sent out an ad. I haven't seen it. We haven't shared it. I mean, that's no, where we're working together, yeah, I, I think, no, on something this important. We can check with them after their meeting. Yeah, I think we should. So on the new, um, excuse me, old business. The website. Yes. So um, last week, um, uh, there was a um, webinar um, that um, was attended uh, with um, one company, um, uh, which the name escapes me. Um, <laughs> me too. And... Uh, and um, uh, and then that afternoon, I attended another webinar with a company called Revise or something. Um, Revise. Yeah. Revise. Um, and I did share with the board um, oh, yeah. their proposal. Yeah, um, so currently we have um, Civic Plus. Um, for those that aren't aware, Civic Plus um, uh, has been uh, charging us a nice chunk of money um, for their basic plan, the basic plan that had been upgraded two or three times since it was uh, implemented, but for some reason, OCAM wasn't updated. Um, and they're in the process of forcing all of their clients, the remaining clients to move to their version 10 and we're a version seven, um, but it's gonna be on their time frame. Um, so it could be the end of December. They won't tell us what their new pricing scale is going to be. There's likely going to be a price increase um, with going to their new version. And looking at these three companies, the other two for what we have right now is between $900 and $1,300. And we're paying about forty-five to $5,000. Um, and we're not getting the value for that. Um, Revise, who would be my uh, top uh, recommendation, um, they they gave us a proposal um, that um, puts every possible option in in the bucket. It's a very complete proposal, um, and um, they um, it's still below. I think I I think I told them we paid about five thousand. I think it's uh, oh, so it's fifty one seventy with everything possible that they offer. And there's things on here that we don't need. Mm. Um, but one thing on here I will point out is um, the ops uh, nine where they would main they would update our website for us. So if the board of the police department wanted to change their website, wanted something posted, they'll do it. If the Board of Health wanted something posted, they'll do it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have a webmaster mm -hmm. um, on our team. Um, hence, we are we have what we have. Um, but that, that was one of the options that they put in. Um, and I think it was like uh, $800 or something um, for that. But the grant we had twenty five thousand. Yep. Um, so, it, for them to set everything up, they would work with us. They'd work with the departments to create what is what we want. Um, it would include one year of the um, 
the contract. Um, so that's included in the 24,620. Um, and then whatever we decide to, to do on a regular basis. What it includes though is RFP, RFQ posting, job postings, where the people can actually apply for their jobs and it can be routed. Um, it includes um, uh, a intranet. We don't need to have SharePoint uh, for um, uh, every employee where we're paying eight fifty a person every month. It's built in. I think it's eighty dollars basically for that option a year for everybody uh, versus eight fifty per employee sure. per month. Um, so it it has so much more than what we have right now, uh, and then reduces some of the other costs that we have. Um, and uh, I will tell you the city of Fall River is a local um, customer of theirs. Um, and any one of these websites um, is a uh, hundred times better than, than ours. Um, so I don't know if, um, you know, this is not on the agenda, but I do think that we should, um, uh, if the board has questions to set something up, but I, after looking at all three, Civic Plus, that other one, um, and revise, um, this would be by far my uh, my top pick. Um, I don't know where those notes were. You know what's good on this is the drag and drop menu. Oh yeah, it is so. Keep it simple. Is 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 the no. we we purchased a template. You're not allowed to change the template. This. You can change anything you want. Now, there are going to be very few people that will want to be touching any of that, but we could opt in to have an expert do that sort of work. Yeah. But if a board or department yeah. was comfortable doing it, they could, they could do it. it. Yeah. I mean, they got, this guy got on a call with me uh, with like an hour notice and spent an hour and a half with me. Uh, going over, he's happy to meet with anybody uh, to discuss it. There is a time frame. Um, I think he said about eight. Uh, it says twenty-one to twenty-seven weeks. He told me it'd be about um, eight to ten weeks, based upon the size of our website, um, which again would be quicker than waiting until the end of the year with um, Civic Plus. Civic Plus, Civic Plus. <laughs> and and we we're already being price gouged. Um, with Civic Plus. Yeah. Oh, and they also include email, an email option um, for everybody um, within this um, proposal. Pricing is good for 60 days. That's to me. And they're willing to go back and remove things um, in the uh, final proposal. It's over and on the 25th, we can make a decision. Yeah. And and you I think you have you have his information. If you wanted to email him questions, I know he'd be happy to uh, answer them. And I again look at the city of Fall River. Uh, their website, um, they're a, uh, a user. I think there was a second one that I included Pittsfield. that received an award. Yeah, Pittsfield, I think, was an award recipient in the um, municipal website contest with the MMA this year. I don't know what the name of that other company was. Let's see. Muni something. Oh yeah, Munibet. 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 Yeah. So they they had. So the thing that was most concerning to me was they do not have the capability for agenda posting. So for me, that was a. Uh, we can't go back. They wouldn't put a time on it. Yeah. They hadn't been and asked when you you put your it. agenda in. Yes, we'd have to go back to the old fashioned way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding for them. It's not my choice. I was just trying to be funny.
but I think their total price was like $900 a year. Um, but that's just to kind of go to show, and theirs was customizable at 900. Hmm. And, and Civic Plus just hasn't been like upfront. We've asked questions. They can't guarantee anything. Of course not. Um, and I mean, I heard from others that they've that have been upgraded that their prices went up their new annual prices went up and that's all i have <clears throat> throw that on for the three, three twenty five. <laughs> we're starting at four o'clock <laughs> it's only eight twelve when we get through all of this mm -hmm. not too bad <laughs> Correspondence. What do we get for correspondence? Received a letter here, February twenty eighth, two thousand twenty four. Citizen who has requested copies of executive session and two executive session meetings. January 8th and November 27th. November 27th was the alone, yeah. And January 8th. Oh, that's that's the number. But I know. Yeah. And we did respond. We did send. And it, yeah. We sent them draft form and then to the draft form and then we get the actual ones here. And. Their request is that they think there should be more written in the minutes so that people have a clear understanding of what occurred and conform to Massachusetts open meeting law. Well, in conforming to the Massachusetts open meeting law, we do not have to have a transcript of the meeting, first of all. Everything that's in these exec session meetings are in the whole. I think it's a clear understanding of what was done at the meeting. Right. And it, these were our decisions and these were our vote. And because this has been voted on, it's now public. Yes. The contract's available. So I don't know what more you need. To know everything's right here. The highlights of these two meetings, and basically what they're asking for is us to go back and expand upon these two meetings. On a records request, we are by law on the chapter 66 under no obligation to do anything like that. I know they question time on the meetings. Um, I think one was 71 minutes, one was 60 minutes. And they think there should be more written for that amount of time. <clears throat> but The idea of the meeting is, what did we decide? Again, we do not have to have a transcript of every single thing. If I recall, one meeting was bringing you up to speed on what we yes. had to do. Yes. And the other meeting was your first meeting going into uh, an exec session for a contract. So we had to bring you up to speed on everything. 
That doesn't change anything. Everything we agreed on is right there. Now, the other thing is, what's different from other contracts is that the person writing minutes is the person talking. Why don't you write the minutes of the meeting while you're explaining all of these things? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you hit the highlights. Mm -hmm. And that's all we have to do is hit the highlights. And we did that. And, you know, we've done a lot with transparency in the past couple of years. More so since you came on the board, you got us hit it in the right direction. What more, did, what more can we do? Really? So is anything that we discussed in that meeting still restricted for public conversation? No, we okay. No, it's it, it's all public. Okay. It's so all public now. When when we received that email um 28th or 29th, I think. Email was the 28th, letter was received on the 29th. Um on the 1st, I happened to respond I think just to the admin assistant um my recommendation would be to update the minutes to include the following. Member Aaron Langlois shared that it was his first time reviewing this contract proposal. Aaron took the necessary time to review the document and asked for clarification on many of the items. He asked about precedent on having a contract for an administrative assistant. Other board members helped to provide background on the aspects of the agreement. So I, I, I do think that that is relevant, that it took me a lot longer probably than it would have taken you guys who have been doing these contracts in the past. But I, I was going through every single question, every single bullet mm -hmm. asking for input. Yeah. And so I appreciate that it wasn't described in that way that I needed to be schooled on it, but that is the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and so personally, I feel like I'm comfortable saying that that's what had to happen. I mean, and so for no. for 71 minutes, um, it, uh, most of that was me having to read it and go through every single question. And, and that definitely isn't described in this um, in the second meeting, um, because that's really when I asked, reviewed all of the contract. What was the reason we went into executive session? To negotiate. Negotiate a contract. Mm -hmm. and, and we did that. And we did that. And, and even though you had to catch up, yeah. I also had to catch up because I hadn't been here. Mm -hmm. So that did take time, but it was all in the negotiation for that contract. It's also the one where you had to start the second. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's true. Right. Yeah. So there's a few minutes there. Uh, when we adjourned to go into executive session, there's still people here. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who, but some citizen came up and was talking to you. Yeah. Mrs. So, DeLeo. So the time was ticking. Mm -hmm. But we weren't discussing any of the issues. Yeah. He was discussing with the board. Yeah. yeah. Uh, different things. And then everybody left and we could go. Yeah, get to what we were there for. So, there's another and then there was that glitch because you had shut it off, and then it had to restart. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nonetheless. Yeah. So the, I mean, that's a little. Now that we're, it's not restricted. That is a little bit more verbal explanation of why there was a 71 minute meeting and only apparently six sentences. Um, so, I mean, I, I at least want that on record that. Um, uh, a lot of time was spent schooling me on the process. Now that you just read that, it's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. <laughs> not in these minutes. It's in yes, tonight's it's, minutes. It's in our minutes, so. These are not. Anybody has any questions? Yeah. She was asking us to amend these. Was she not? Wasn't that the term that, she Yeah, used? that was the, the term to amend the um, minutes. We, we are under no obligation by law to amend minutes. A request to be heard. I've got, had my hand up for a while here. Barbara Piucci. Yes, Barbara, go ahead. 
Uh, I would like to read a copy of the letter that I sent in uh, for the town public's benefit and um, sure. for transparency and to have it in, in the record. Yep, sure, go ahead. So on, um, I mailed via first class and emailed um, on February 28th to the town of Oakham Board of Selectmen regarding executive session minutes for November 27th, 2023 and January 8th, 2024, held to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with the non-union personnel for the administrative assistant to the Board of Selectmen. Dear Board of Selectmen, on January 23rd, 2024, pursuant to Massachusetts open meeting law, I requested a copy of your approved minutes for meetings held on November 23rd, 2023 and January 8th, 2024. Gratefully, I received a copy of your approved minutes on February 5th, 2024. After reading your minutes, I believe they lack the mandatory de details required by the Massachusetts open meeting law. The Massachusetts open meeting law requires that minutes contain enough detail and accuracy that a member of the public who did not attend the meeting could read the minutes and have a clear understanding of what occurred. You must be aware of your responsibility because you adequately complied with the law and approved minutes for two previous executive session meetings. More specifically, one was held for the police chief January 26th and July 10th, 2023, and another for the highway superintendent, August 21, October 2nd, and October 16th, 2023. Your approved minutes for those two positions included detailed information as to what the negotiations were for, why they took place at that time, the questions that were asked, summaries of the answers and discussions, the amount of pay, and other items to be considered for inclusion in a contract, what the funding sources would be for any increases and the details of what was ultimately agreed upon and voted on for the employment contract. In contrast, the, number, the November 27, 2023 20, uh, approved minutes condense a 68 minute meeting into three general sentences and four bullet points. The January 8th, 2024 approved minutes condense a 71 minute meeting into six general sentences. These approved minutes for the two executive sessions for the administrative assistant to the Board of Selectmen do not contain essential details required to meet your obligations of the Massachusetts open meeting law. This letter serves as a formal request for you to correct your approved minutes for the executive sessions held on November 27th, 2023 and January 8th, 2024, so that those minutes contain enough detail and accuracy that a member of the public who did not attend the meeting could read the minutes and have a clear understanding of what occurred and conform to the Massachusetts open meeting law. Very truly yours, Barbara Pucci. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Um, I look at this and I know what happened that we negotiated a contract and we approved a contract and then we approved the minutes of the meeting as written. I don't feel inclined to amend them. I'll admit I um, need to do a better job of taking notes during these meetings um, because I don't. Um, and honestly, unfortunately, with executive session, we're not recording them, so I don't. I can't go back and and refer. Um, and so, you know, when the minutes were presented, and I I don't think I had um, read them until they were being presented. Um, uh, you know, I don't even know that I would have been comfortable trying to rack my brain back to January 8th if there was something relevant um, that had been discussed that wasn't in the minutes. Um, and so, uh, you know, in retrospect, uh, two months later, um, 
or a month and a half later, I went back, thought about it, and at least recollected um, the amount of time that I spent um, really understanding why we're doing it, um, what the precedent was, um, and even um, you know disagreed with at least one of the items um, in the proposed um, contract, which was um, clearly it is clearly noted. Here. Um, so, um, uh, other than the um, my recollection of of the time I spent um, on it, I wouldn't know anything else to amend other than uh, what I've already previously submitted. Like like I said, in this particular one, and it wasn't with the other ones. This involved our administrative assistant. She cannot talk, explain things, and write down minutes mm -hmm. the way she does with everybody else because she's listening mm -hmm. to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Maybe going forward in that kind of a situation, someone else, someone else on the board should take yeah. the minutes. I agree. You know that way. Yep. We won't run into this again. Yep. But I think we've. And I just want to, if I may, on my. Um, Point here on the November 27th meeting where the, it says the board of selectmen gathered with the administrative assistant for contract negotiations. In this contract, it states the pay rate and the benefits of the memorandum voted on August 1st. So if you do go back to the August 1st, and maybe I should have listed that um, minutes, those bulletins are in th that set of minutes. I just wanted to where you could oh, find that information that was for August 1st. Yes. Which the minutes were had been already approved and voted on. So, just another suggestion: your statement that you made tonight can be in the minutes of this meeting. I think minutes of this meeting could be attached to those because they do go together. That'll explain what we need to explain. And like I said, the copy of the contract is available for any citizen that wants it. You can actually read it. I'll, I'll stand by the um, the minutes as they are. I I don't know what else could have been put into there. To explain that we're looking at a contract. We came up with a contract. It's stated there. What's in the contract is stated there. And we have a copy of the contract that can go to anybody. So you can actually see that. I, I don't know, Mrs. Pucci, what else you would be looking for. So I'm looking for transparency with the details and the accuracy of what went into that contract and what the board voted on for that contract. The details, if you, if you asked me, so let me finish, please. you asked me, so let me finish, please. I'm looking for that type of transparency um, with the open meeting laws for the detail and accuracy of actually what went into that contract and what was vote ultimately voted on. So this one thing I'm looking for is transparency. And the other thing I'm looking for is compliance with the open meeting law in Massachusetts. And I, the, the contract. It's a contract. The first time I received it was the first meeting, um, so that was already created at that point. Some somebody presented that um, contract. This, this came, and that's okay. in the minutes from August. Did you say the what the is benefits. Hmm? the benefits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so nothing nothing was I can tell you nothing was created in that meeting in either of those meetings. There was nothing added. Um, that was already the 
the draft. Mm -hmm. At least that's the first time I'd ever seen it. And all of the the big tickets, like the the wages, the hours, the remote, the contract terms, um, I believe those were already set on August 1st before I joined the board. Um or at least the the rate the rates and right. the benefits were agreed upon. Um, so there, nothing was added or subtracted um, during either of those two meetings that I participated in. Um, we did make one change to the severance. That was that was the only thing that changed uh, was what was documented that I had expressed concern about the severance. Right. Um, and so there was um, mutual agreement um without a necessarily a formal vote there was consensus um and then when it came time for a vote on the contract it was with that um change made to the agreement in open session in, in open session we, right the, the vote happened in open session but we had in front of us the amended mm -hmm. um version right that's the way negotiations yep. work yeah If I may, can you hear me? Lucy. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm sitting back here and I'm listening to both sides and that's something that I usually do on a regular basis professionally. And what is very clear to me is there was a difference in treatment between the three positions that I heard. Um, there's no question about what the um, superintendent's contract was discussed and everything that was disclosed. There's no question that that was adequately addressed in the minutes. The same thing was for the uh, police chief. However, the fact that we had another individual go through a contract negotiation who's a non-union member, that treatment was not the same as the other two. That can be viewed as something that maybe there was something hidden um, you raise the fact that you can't take notes at the same time that you're negotiating a contract for yourself um, that probably should have been thought about before and a recording of that could have been taken so that the minutes could have accurately reflected what was going on. Um, also, I come to the conclusion that there's a lot of pushback to complying with this open meeting requirement. Um, I don't think that's advisable. I think it's a poor decision. I think that what is being requested is something that should be seriously considered because there are alternatives available to people that are not happy with the response that they got today. And you really don't want to open that door. I'm not threatening anybody with anything. I'm just educating because you can make a better decision once you have more information. But I think you should seriously think about correcting the minutes so that you now have a little bit more disclosure about your administrative assistance contract negotiations the same way you did with the other two. Um, I think that's my opinion. Um, I understand I came in a little late tonight uh, on the opening of the meeting and somebody was talking about seven people resigning from the town and then the fire chief had to come in and, and state his position about trying to correct rumors that are going on. Um, a lot of this can be um, addressed adequately if minutes are taken adequately and there's a lot of transparency. Uh, that's my opinion. I, I do um, have the right to voice my opinion and that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You're welcome. What do you want to do? Does anybody want to make a motion or or question? Um, I would make a motion to amend the minutes uh, with the um, draft that I. Um, had submitted and read.
Second. No. You can. I'm not in favor of amending these, but I am in favor of including your statement to be attached to these. And I would just say there, my recollection, there was absolutely no further substantive matter discussed in those meetings. Um, uh, I, I do think simply amending it with this language would um, meet the requester um, a little bit, um, but um, certainly I can attest that um, uh, no one is being misled, and um, uh, I absolutely understand that I cannot talk and take notes, um, and I think it's uh, a, a valid uh, point that there was a, dis a difference between um, minutes um, uh, when you're the the person speaking or um, when it's being a uh, discussion about you. Um, so um, I, there's, there was absolutely no um, intent um, to mislead or to provide less information um, than, than was provided. Um, but um, with no second, um, I, I appreciate that at least this is in the minutes. Fine. All right. Another correspondence. That's not hers. This is a complaint that came in about somebody operating a business with a business license, but that should go to a building inspector. Okay. We do have a motion to adjourn. Could I bring up one other old business? Sorry. Yep, um, we had a very good meeting, I think, on Saturday. Um, Tom and Maribel, um, Mrs. Turnbull, um, were, and Kevin, um, mm -hmm. Fred. Um, Who else was there? We had so Walter, Tom Sopay, Walter, Walter Tom Sopay, Berenger, Karen Caljo, um, Randy, Randy, Randy Packard. Packard. Well, it's all the uh, Cynthia Henshaw from Lynn mm -hmm. uh, Sensusi, Joe Sensusi. Um, regarding the Municipal Vulnerability Plan, oh, yeah. Central Mass Regional Planning Commission um, had like 10 people, all an average of 20 years old. Um, <laughs> and and um, it was a very good open conversation about um, looking at opportunities that have a financial benefit, um, identifying um, potential needs. Um, uh, and um, so they are, I'm not gonna even say the 25th, but um, they are working on finalizing their document. Yeah. It does have to have a, a, a public meeting um, for it to be accepted by the town. And then if we had it in in time, we'd be able to apply for grants this grant year on this MVP grant. Oh. The uh, state um, person, I don't know. Andrew something. Okay, Andrew. Andrew Smith. Smith, oh, that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. um, he said, it's gonna be approved. 
basically, if you have your town board of selectmen approve it, it's approved. Um, and with that, we could then submit for even if it's a central mass regional planning, do an assessment of culverts. Yeah. And you get $50,000 or whatever for that. We could get in this year. Oh. Um, and um, I don't remember when the um, that particular grant uh, closes, the MVP grant, but it's sometime in April. Mid to late April. Yeah. So um, it's going to be tight if it's on the first. <laughs> 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 so even if we had it as a placeholder on the 25th oh, yeah, I like that word placeholder <laughs> um, it's money that we we have all put in you know tom maribel and i have put in a lot of hours on this um that if we have an opportunity to get any money this year it helps us uh in future for the future okay and I must say, if I may, it was good to have some of the um, folks that have been around and have more knowledge than what us youngins <laughs> um, might have. Just knowing all these culverts and these things that were once were there and now no longer um, any knowledge. I think that was huge yeah. for the um, workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's two other things that they're working on as part of this. Um, the open space plan. And uh, hazard mitigation. Hazard mitigation. Um, and those also are grant opportunities, but we're not gonna push those for this year. Um, but um, there'll be a survey that will go out, we'll, at, we'll be asked to promote uh, for people to fill out. Um, and um, uh, a forum, which would be at a public meeting, for people to come in and ask questions that yeah. central mass regional planning would lead. Oh. And I, if I may, I was very proud to say that the guy, Andrew Smith from the state was completely impressed by our roads. The fact that the highway superintendent can put together all these projects and, uh, you know, put the project together, the cost and execute it and that all our roads ex with the exception of two are paved and all done he was blown away. He pretty much said, what's the secret? That's How do you do this? So well done, Kevin, in the highway department. I, I, I just thought that for someone who sees bigger towns and uh, bigger problems, bigger problems, problems and yeah. more diverse, yeah. the fact that he was so impressed by something like that, it's almost like he hadn't seen that before or at least very minimal. minimal. So, I, I mean, he was, he really, I feel like he wanted to take Kevin to the side and pick his brain and said, big shoes to fill for the next guy. So I, I, I thought that was a proud moment in our town. Yeah. Congratulations. It's yeah. an <laughs> retirement party. It was. And that's what they said. Because we can't say. provide anything. So <laughs> yeah. that was your pizza. <laughs> that was the party. That was, that was this retirement party. Well, I think party. that that comment was definitely, uh, you know, I, I thought, I just felt proud it's for someone who doesn't know our town, doesn't know the employees. It wasn't biased by any means. It was strictly on the facts. And and like I said then, and I say again, it's not a matter of just doing the physical work. It's having the knowledge and the capability of doing the behind the scenes and the paperwork to obtain those big opportunities to assure money so these projects can get done without the funding. You can't do any of it. So. Uh, and I don't think I specifically mentioned Lucy, but Lucy was very involved uh, yes. in the meeting. And um, so I think it was great. The turnout was better than I expected. And the, it was a positive conversation. Good. Yeah. Good. I, thought, I thought it was very well done. Very well received. I mean, if I had to give up a Saturday for four and a half uh -huh. plus hours, I know. a sunny Saturday. <laughs> We all said we were only going to stay a few hours. Or I well, time. We some of you did. I only came for the end, pizza. <laughs> you ate all the cookies. I, listen, I had to stay away. Did they, did they replace the paper plates and plastic? I, I haven't, but I, I will. No, no, Central Mass Regional Planning oh, that well, they, they would. Will. Yeah, no, not yet. Just we'll don't see. let Lucy know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll replace the paper roll, the paper towels that's from, from downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the food place didn't provide any of the things they were supposed to. Like plates and napkins and silverware. I was wear. wondering how I got a metal fork. 
I washed them. Uh, Karen did a scavenger hunt. No, it wouldn't hall. have come from downstairs. Uh, no, no one would do that. <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> Salad was nice. Yeah, it was very good. No, I was very impressed by the metal fork. I said, wow, it's not plastic. <laughs> Pizza was very good. I'm done. Okay. I, I would move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 847. 847.